Hey everybody. In our last video we talked about some treatment options from a nutritional standpoint regarding two types of anemia. Macrocytic and iron deficiency anemias. We're going to talk a little bit more about a couple of types of anemia that are present and fairly common mm -hmm. and how those might impact your life. So Dr. Horsley, which one would you like to talk about? Yeah, so one of the type of anemias that is present is hemolytic anemia. So nice fun word, hemo, blood, lytic or lysis being destroying or cutting. So it means that your red blood cells are actually being destroyed very rapidly. So in this, what you'll see on blood work is that you're having a lot of immature red blood cells because they keep coming up because your red blood cells are being destroyed so quickly. So your body's always creating new blood cells. So the big factor is why? Why are your red blood cells being destroyed so quickly? And that can be because of different genetic conditions. Some of that comes from things like sickle cell anemia, where your the types of red blood cells that you have are destroying others. Otherwise, it can be from more of an autoimmune condition, so that your immune system is attacking those different type of red blood cells. Mm -hmm. And so it's determining what's the specific cause for you and taking different um, measures to help with that. If that's helping to support your immune system or if that's doing other things to help with genetic factors that you can, those are different things you can do to help with hemolytic anemia. So it's interesting you talk about a hemolytic anemia. One of them is pernicious anemia. Mm -hmm. So in pernicious anemia, individuals don't create intrinsic factor in mm -hmm. the gut, which means they cannot cleave or separate certain B vitamins from the foods that they eat. Yep. From a nutritional standpoint, there's a company called Standard Process who makes a product called Zypan, mm -hmm. and Zypan has intrinsic factor in it. And I'm sure there are a bunch of other companies that have intrinsic factor supplements, but in a situation of someone like hemolytic anemia, mm -hmm. it's not a replacement of the B vitamin or the iron that they're missing. Yeah. We might support that individual with hemolytic anemia by giving them more intrinsic factor in their diet as a pill just to help their body to separate those, those B vitamins out mm -hmm. a little bit more efficiently so that their anemic, their, their breaking down of those red blood cells doesn't contribute to their anemia as much. So there's a lot of ways we can try and address different anemic tendencies from a nutritional standpoint. But sometimes, like you mentioned, there's autoimmune things or there's genetic imbalances that may predispose us to have more anemias. One of them is an MTHFR yeah. gene defect. MTHFR, some people may have heard of, stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, mm -hmm. which is a word about this long if you choose to Google it. <laughs> but basically that's an enzyme or genetic imbalance in the in the body where you don't create the enzyme necessary to convert B vitamins through their various stages, mm -hmm. specifically B9 uh, or folate. So if someone has an MTHFR gene defect, mm -hmm. how might that affect their ability to be anemic free throughout their life? Yeah. So if you have an MTHFR defect, then you're not going to be able to convert different B9, B12 around in this pathway. And so what that's also going to do is going to increase um, or potentially increase your homocysteine, which is an inflammatory marker. So that is going to continue to increase that side of inflammation in your body, which is going to further increase those different anemic symptoms that you're having, as well as it can be a factor in creating more of those uh, macrocytic anemias because you're having an imbalance in your B vitamin production and your ability to continue to make that because to have active B vitamins, you need that methylation factor. And so if you're not able to do it effectively because of genetics, that's gonna put a burden on your liver. And this will then have other symptoms related to your liver, which can then create all this cascade of other symptoms that you're having for detoxification issues, as well as other sides of fatigue issues and things like that because it just burdens your other parts of your system as well. So therefore, if someone has an MTHFR gene defect, they eat a bunch of B vitamins, their liver doesn't convert them like they're supposed to, mm -hmm. their red blood cells don't get the raw nutrients or the building blocks to be made appropriately, the anemia sets in, their liver's already gummed up. Yep. Another chemical that you mentioned called homocysteine increases the inflammation level in the body and things just spiral out of control from yep. there. All because of a genetic factor mm -hmm. that no one had any control over, even if they eat the healthiest diet they can. Yep. It's just a gene that doesn't work that's common to mm -hmm. find imbalances Very within common. the population that 
because of that gene imbalance, now they can be setting themselves up for an anemic problem, Correct. as well as a variety of other symptoms. Yeah. Just because these building blocks aren't able to go through the pathways like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if someone has an MTHFR gene defect issue, how do they overcome that and not remain anemic the rest of their life? Yeah. So one of the best ways to help if you have that gene defect is to help by giving supplements that have those methylated B vitamins. So that will take that pressure off of your liver so it doesn't have to worry about already being gummed up, now having more pressure on this. So taking things like methylcobalamin or methyl tetrahydrofolate or different supplements there that will help to take care of that um, gene defect that you have. So it bypasses that part of your genetic factor where your body has to put the methylation factor on it. It just gives your body that thing so it allows your liver to take a breather in that side. And so that's one of the best ways to help in that process is by giving your body the things that it needs so it doesn't have to make them on the back end. So therefore, you said the word methylated, that's the pre-converted form. So rather than taking regular B12, I take converted or methylated, methylated B12, mm -hmm. and that bypasses the MTHFR mm -hmm. gene defect, allowing me to at least have a better chance of success with anemia. Exactly. Excellent.